guys and welcome back to Lazy May's Country Kitchen. Boy, are you in for a treat today. So let me get my hair bit up and let's get to cooking. Alrighty guys, I got my two pounds of hamburger in here and we are going to be making some wonderful meatloaf. My mama made it this way and I absolutely love it. So we're going to start off by adding us some salt. Then we're going to put us some black pepper in here. Ground black pepper. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this. And I don't add very much. Just something for some good good flavor then I'm gonna add me some onion powder I love these seasonings that y'all always see me using on meat I absolutely love them so then I'm gonna add a little bit of roasted garlic and if y'all don't know roasted garlic powder actually gives your powder your um garlic powder a little oomph it's more garlicky than just regular garlic powder so you don't need nowhere near as much so to this we are adding this was a small onion so the whole thing's going in here but it was a really small onion we're going to put it in there. Then we're going to use this one egg. I'm trying to get it cracked without getting shell in there. I'm always terrified of getting shells in anything. And then we are going to use a half a pack of crackers. And I've got two pieces of ones here that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to use a fresh pack. But if you've got some that's going just a little stale, you can put, you can use them in here. Or you can also use breadcrumbs, but I've always used crackers. I love crackers in my meatloaf. But like I said, there's two pounds of um, ground beef in here. And I always crunch them up before I open them. And I make sure that I go a cracker, don't go as far down, and then that way you ain't got crunched up crackers next time you want some peanut butter crackers. Even if I gotta crunch them up in the bowl. But then I just hold my hand right here, and then I dump. And see, uh, I don't know if you can see down in there, but see that cracker is not crumbled. I'm going to get these little crumbs out. Hold my other crackers in. Oops, one fell out. That's enough trackers. Alrighty, I'm going to... I'm going to use a can of soup. You can use all ketchup, but it's easier to just use a can of soup. You can also use a can of mushroom soup in this, and it's really good. But tonight, I'm just using mater soup. So let me grab it, and I'll be right back because I forgot it. Alrighty, guys. I don't know if I think I forgot to turn it on, but I'm just using a can of um, tomato soup off-brand. And I just put it in, get all the goody goody out of the can. Now, I usually put a green bell pepper in here too, but I didn't have a green bell pepper. And I've been wanting some good old meatloaf for about a week. And I decided I'm going to make it without the green bell pepper. 
because I got a house in them. Now, the fun part is now you get to play and mix everything up. So all I'm going to do is just scrunch all of this together and mix it up. And whenever I get it mixed up, I'll come right back. Alrighty, guys, whenever you get everything mushed where you can see crackers and onions and all that good stuff all through here, then you know you got it mixed up really good. Oh. But I just keep moving things from the side and bringing it to the middle. That's all I do to mix it up good. I've always done it this way. I'm assuming you could probably use a spoon or whatever because I know some people have a thing about textures and feeling this in their hands and all this, but I've just always done it this way. And ever how you mix up your stuff is you. But I know whenever I'm adding seasonings to the meat, I just eyeball whatever goes across I usually just make sure it's sprinkled across the meat good enough. And then if I got two on top of one another like I did here, I make sure it's enough for two amounts. But you can probably use, I, I don't know, it's probably a half a tablespoon. It's probably what I used with everything except for the salt. I know the tomato soup's got salt in it, so I didn't add as much salt to this. Alrighty. I'm going to put this in my cast iron skillet. I need to kind of get some of this stuff off of my hands. Let me get my hands washed and everything, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, guys, I'm back. So, as you know, my hamburger don't have hardly any fat at all in it so i just put a little bit of um, pan spray in here and made sure it was sprayed around real good and i'm going to rake this down in my cast iron skillet I'm going to press this down. And one thing I like to do to make it cook quicker is I'll, I'll do this. And it pokes little holes in it. Two, that's a good place for your ketchup to go. Because I put ketchup on top of mine and I bake it. And I've got my oven preheating to 350. So that's what I cook this on is 350 and I always watch mine and usually at 350 your top don't get burned or nothing like that but I always watch it and if it starts getting too brown then you can cover it with tin foil or whatever. Alrighty now since you got all your holes poked in it you'll take some good old tomato ketchup shake her up really really good make sure you get her mixed up and then All you're going to do is squirt you some ketchup all over the top. And yeah, mine's getting low, so I hope I got enough for this. My taters keep boiling over. Guys, I'm sorry. Let me finish this up <laughs> so y'all ain't got to hear this, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, whenever you get all of your ketchup on top, just take and just kind of smooth it out a little bit. You can leave it thick. I always just smooth mine out a little bit. Like so. And we're going to get her put in the oven. Because her is now done. And I can't wait. This is some of the best meatloaf I've ever eaten. I just love this meatloaf. I don't put no sausage in mine. I know you can, but I love it with just pure beef. So anyway, I'm going to put it in the oven on 350. 
and I'll let you know because with meatloaf it depends on what you're using as far as what container you're putting it in for the thickness as to how long you're going to cook it. So I'll let you know how long this cooked and just keep an eye on it because whenever it starts pulling away from the sides getting a little you know brown then I always pull it out and I'll cut me a slit in the middle and look in it and I'll let you know how long it took. I'll bring you right back as soon as it gets done. Alrighty guys this took around it was about 40 minutes but do you see how it's pulled away from the sides of the pan. That is what you are looking for. And I'm going to cut a piece and I'll show you that it's done on the inside. But this recipe, like I said, comes from my wonderful mama. She's been cooking it this way for many, many years. My grandma cooked it this way. And it's just really, really good meatloaf. But you see how done? There's no redness or anything. So we'll see if it's Mr. Lazy approved. I'm going to get him just a little bit more. Got some good old cream taters to go with it. And we got some good old green beans too. And I gotta get him a dinner roll. Let's give him just a wee tad bit more taters. But don't that look good? Is that not pretty? Picture it with a dinner roll. Well, we'll get him to give it a taste test and see how he likes it. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, guys. He's got his plate and he's getting ready to give her a big old taste test. He usually loves my meatloaf, so... You give it a big old thumbs up and recommend people give it a whirl. Alrighty, guys. Sorry he's got a little bit of dirt on him, but we've worked all day and had to get bread and this, that, and the other. But we're going to let him eat this and be in peace. So we hope you enjoy it. And God bless each and every one of you. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.